Hey. Okay. Mm. So, tonight is a very special episode of RGCWV Random Geek Culture in West Virginia. Tonight is the 50th episode spectacular. Woo. Woo. Special and- episode isn't we're killing time until the next episode when all the things happen. Yeah, when the E3 thing happens. In fact, not only that, we have the next two episodes um, planned out. We already hinted, or we already told you what the next episode is going to be. Um, but uh, at the uh, tail end of this episode, we're going to talk about the amazing things that are going to happen in the episode after that. I know Alex is pretty excited for it. So uh, anyway, uh, yeah, this I'm not... is just a clip show. Yeah. We're just going to do a clip show. We're just going to do a uh... clip show. No, we're not going to do a clip show. No. Um, so in Aww. this in this episode, we are going to talk about the uh, our favorite episodes, um, the ones that we liked doing the most, our favorite moments, you know that that kind of stuff. Well, we talked a little bit about this um, earlier, so we're going to try to keep a structure, but. You know us. We always go off topic. You know, that's how we are. So, anyway, anyway. um, uh, Are you guys ready to go? I'm ready to go. Um, So, with me tonight is Mike Mallow. Hi. Greg. Hey. And Alex. Hey. And um, so... uh, are you, I, I'm I'm kind of excited for tonight. Um, t- though I tell you what, I, I I'm 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 trying to keep my con- concentration after trying to digest that state of play that just aired here. Like, what was it? An hour ago? An hour ago? Yeah. yeah it came, came. Oh, it's still on. It is still on. It- yeah, I was watching. Um, they were going over the new Unreal Engine. Oh, oh. it's insane. You'll have to go back and watch it. I must have just got the Horizon announcement and that was it. Why, why is it in Spain now? Oh, insane. Okay. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> Mainly on the plane. <laughs> so, anyway. Anyway. Um, so, um, first off, I just wanted to get your you guys' gauge on, you know, how, th- how you think we've done, how you think we've evolved as a podcast over the last year. Cause I mean, I, I went back recently and listened to our first episode and I'm not sure why anybody kept listening. Cause that was, it was horrible, horrible. I mean, it's not that much better now, but still it's, it was pretty bad then. Um, but, uh, I'd like to, I'd like to get you guys' uh, take on it, especially, especially Mike, since, uh, Mike, you were, you've been with us since the beginning. That's right. Uh, I would say the most notable changes we have multiplied significantly. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I think uh, the quality of uh, episode has gotten better. Yeah, yeah, and I think um, that, uh, uh, not to toot my own horn, but I think that has to do partly with I'm a better host. <laughs> you've you've evolved as a host. <laughs> yeah. I'm the no, host. no, I, I'd agree. I would agree you, with that. That you, uh, keeping things out. moving. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you I, brought out the primordial podcast ooze, and then grew legs, and then a tail, and then you could fly. Oh man, that just reminds me of the the. Are you watching that show, um, uh, Love, Death, and Robots? They're, they're, I've seen on my list. Yeah, I it's, it's, good. it's good. It's good, but there is there's a, actually uh, the first episode talks about that, and it's really funny. Just just watch the, watch that watch that first episode. It, it'll hook you on the show. But yeah, but anyway, what are we talking about tonight? Huh? What are we talking about today? What? Well, well, I I already went over what we we're talking about today. Okay. In, in fact, okay. we're ta- we're talking about uh, talking about how uh, yeah. how the podcast has evolved. Okay. Um, but um, uh, Alex, you you've been with us for 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 quite a while, um, uh, off and on to the beginning, uh, towards the beginning. But uh, then you you started uh, doing it uh, more and more frequently, and that, now it's almost every every single episode. Um, how do you feel the pub- podcast has evolved as, as uh, um, you know refining our medium? I think uh, four four is a good number 
of of hosts. You know, most other things that I see like this have more than two hosts, unless it's like a specialty thing, unless it's uh, like more of a documentary. But most round table talk about stuff podcasts have uh, three, four, or five people. Um, so yeah, having uh, me and, and Mike and uh, and Greg, I think is big positive for the show. Um, uh, structure. Like, definitely having uh, an outline. Earlier days, we didn't have that much of an outline. It was just a topic that we could all talk about for hours, you know? <laughs> but um, just a uh, new Star Wars movie, go. And then we ramble about the Star Wars movie for, for an hour, you know? We have better structure now. I I, I definitely agree. Um uh- the the show has has definitely gotten better. I mean, shoot, uh, Greg, you even uh, were in on the uh, show uh, t- uh, off and on towards the beginning. Oh, mm-hmm. you were on the the Fallout seventy six episode, weren't you? Yes, yes, that's right. And oh my goodness, how has that been a mixed bag across this show? We have gone back and forth on uh, on is it good is it not good you know what are they doing you know that that kind of thing and i'm just i haven't really changed my opinion on fallout 76 uh, i'm okay i think that's all you man no my opinion on how fallout 76 was on at first it has not changed and it was a it was a great it was a great um experience i'm glad that i was part of it however um, the business business practices that Bethesda took a turn on that is the thing that I was I was by far against um, um, but I'm on my second year fall out first yeah, uh, yeah and in you know what we all have our opinions on that and, and, and I'm not gonna say that I, I don't know I, I just I I don't want I don't want this to be a gripe episode if anything. Yeah. But I will say I, I listened to our first episode about uh, Fallout, and um, it was funny to hear how much we gushed about it in the beginning. To like later on, was like, "Oh, this business model sucks." And uh, well, which when I say us, I mean Luke, but uh, mostly because I've been a staunch defender of it, and it's it's only gotten better. Yeah, and and it's p- people like you that have got, uh, continued continued the um the the game and I'm, i've gone people back. like you people like me what do you <laughs> mothman yeah um right. and, and, i mean i'm not that first year of of fallout the first nine months of fallout um what was absolutely fantastic and it, the it, it was a wild ride. <laughs> I, I I don't know what else to say about it. Um, I mean, probably the best that I had playing that game was when it was me, Alex, and Bobby. Which I think Bobby might be on the podcast later. Um, he, he might do a pop in. Um, Bobby is the one that I do the uh, classic cartridge catalog with. Uh, him and Alex. Um, Bobby's the technical director. Um, but it's also his. It's also his catalog. Yes, yes, it is his catalog of cartridges. Actually, I've helped build that over the years. When we've been, when we're doing an episode where we're, well, I'll buy one, he'll buy one, I'll buy one, he'll buy one, you know, that kind of thing. Unless it's a game that is ridiculously overpriced, like um, we did uh, um, a uh, episode that hasn't been published yet, but um, it was uh, Winback Operation Winback for Nintendo sixty four. Oh. And it's Real. like 50, 60, 70 bucks on eBay. So I messaged Aaron. <laughs> I messaged Aaron and I said, hey, do you still have your copy? And he's like, uh, yeah, you want it? I'm like, yeah, I kind of need it for the uh, episode if, you, uh, if you're able to get it to me. And uh, he sent it to me in the mail like the next day. So we. You, you, so you, you screwed him out of 60 or $70 on eBay is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know for a fact that it was his 
post thing? It probably was. But... No, I'm saying he, he could have. He had the option to sell it on eBay for that much. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, I'm kind of a jerk. Um... <laughs> yeah, agreed. <laughs> agreed. Gosh. How, why do you guys put up with me? It's rough, I gotta Ratings. tell you. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so in, in, anyway, um, we we've talked about the the uh, the seventy six stuff mm. till we're blue in the face. Now, um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up, though, since we're talking about you know when Greg po- joined the podcast and when Alex jo- um was a uh, par- a part of the podcast um early on. You guys are part of the series that I was doing, um, which was Geeks of Different Regions in West Virginia. And Greg did the, um, the, the West Virginia tourism part of, uh, of the episode, and then Alex did the, the fencing part, which we had the Outer Rim Praxium guys on that episode. That was, they, they, they were fun, fun to talk to. Um, and then, of course, we had um, the organizer of the WV PopCon, which... From what I hear, might actually be a thing this year. Um, I would like, would like that that to be a uh, be a thing. Yeah. So, uh, hold on a second. So, um, but uh, I, one of the things that I loved about that episode, though, Greg, was the fact that we started out talking about West Virginia tourism and then we ended up talking uh, like half of the episode was how small business survives in West Virginia. <laughs> oh, I'm trying to remember that. Yeah. Yeah, because, we, well, one of the things we were talking about was how downtown Buckhannon is a uh, you know, a great example of you know how oh, an entire, yeah how an entire yeah. community can, it did lose a few businesses to covid but overall it's in it's in like like our our guest the from the Elkins Buck- and their downtown the ghost town yeah mm-hmm. um the jester line jester line uh, that that went out of business which yeah that, sadly that was unfortunate that was sad so but uh um yeah i'll miss the gesture line right um so let's go ahead and uh talk about our our favorite episodes um mike what was your favorite episode to do not not like the best episode published but your favorite episode to be a part of uh, my my favorite episodes were the ones where we had lists, um, <laughs> uh, of which I believe there's only two. I could be wrong. Uh, there was one I'm not going to talk about now because I think someone else may bring it up. No, you can it's go not ahead. That's cool. You can go ahead. Um, the, the the two of them are the Soundbite Symphony, which was our favorite. Uh, I think it's mine and Luke's favorite soundtracks of all time. Oh man, that was a and, good episode. Fun, a lot of fun. And is yeah. also the only episode that's not monetized. Um, it's hard to claim fair use when you're using sound bites <laughs> from the games. <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. And the the other one was um, our favorite games of the nineties. Um, was that just us two? I don't know. I it was just us two, and I went back okay. and listened to that episode today, and I was like, man, that was a fun. Ep- I forgot how good that episode was. Um, I think the other, uh, there was two other list episodes, um, that were part geek out and part like list episode was the Radiohead episode and the Modest Mouse uh, episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. which I, I definitely like that we don't just, we talk a lot about video games on here, but we don't just do video games. We do other stuff we do books we do movies we do music and um i I like that we're we're not stagnant to one thing sometimes i think we talk about video games a little bit too much but uh, Uh, it's probably hard for us collectively to come to a consensus on our favorite music um i could be wrong Uh, you know the the two that we have chosen are the two that we definitely can agree on me and you yeah um but uh 
I, I think beyond those two, it diverges quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, um, so what was your favorite episode to like that, that we produced, like that you were a part of, not a part of what, what, which was your favorite of the series? Um, I, I'm still really like pleased with the initial fallout one that I think we did two kind of in the lead up. Um, we did one, uh, with Greg where, uh, we, we got to play the, uh, beta before it. Like it was like a time beta where you can only play right. certain times a day. Yeah, that's right. And um, I was li- listening to it today, and it kind of cracked me up that there, there's the randomness of that episode showed because we started out with Fallout and then got into a uh, discussion about uh, the election that was like days away about the uh, oh ballot my- amendments. <laughs> I forgot about that, and and I was like trying to talk about how you know. The 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 half is controlled, or the that one's con, or one party controls the house, and one party controls the senate. And Cassie was asking, "Well, is that a good thing?" And I was like, "I don't want either party to have complete and total control of both house and senate." And then you, uh, I was like, "I don't. I, did we go too political on this?" And you said, "I think we threaded that needle quite well." <laughs> well, well, we we got onto like the uh, abortion uh, ballot measure. Oh, and we're like, we're like, what's that about? I was like, wow, we, we, uh, yeah, we, we, oh. we did walk the line on that one. Wow, we did. <laughs> we swag like, for the fences. I, but I was listening to that. I was like, I can't believe we talked about that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so that that one is one for the books, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and just just how excited we were for the game at that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, and nobody can take the. Uh, take that away how excited we were when it uh, when it launched that's worth a subscription to fallout first isn't it do, 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 do. continual t- <laughs> don't reel me back in uh, okay okay <laughs> All right. All right. I, gotta, I gotta finish dinner make some, talk to somebody else okay um, Alex <laughs> so what was your favorite episode to be a part of like, what was your most fun episode? Uh, the most fun episode, I really liked the Avatar The Last Airbender uh, episode, partially because, like, me and Luke held off from talking about it outside of the podcast so that, so that you know, I could have that, that first discussion. So you're into the show now, you know, what do you think? It was exciting to, to, to hear that on stream for the first time. And um, the whole... Um, the trivia game. I loved. I loved doing the. Tri- what, what was that guy's name that that came on? You're talking Who? to him right now. He's here. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> that was that Greg. Was Greg. <laughs> Who was that guy? I don't... <laughs> he said, uh, I'm glad you didn't say. Oh, uh, he fool. sounded like an asshole. <laughs> I'm such a fool. Oh uh, no! But anyway, whoever that was, um, he was fantastic. He popped on, uh, <laughs> dur- you know, halfway through, and and threw out a bunch of uh, uh, trivia questions about um, Avatar, and it, it was really fun. I, ha- I had a lot of fun asking, answering the trivia questions. So um, yeah, I think that's that was the most fun episode that I've done. So. Um, which is your favorite episode that we've produced? Mm, that's hard to say. That's hard to say. Um, I, I particularly like the drive-in episode because, um, it's, it's about something in West Virginia. It's not about a piece of media. It's not about, uh, you know, something going on somewhere else. It's a geek thing that you can do in West Virginia and and that's kind of the thesis of the show is 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 geek culture in West Virginia. So I I think that's one of my favorites. <clears throat> right, right. Um, that, those are those are definitely good ones. Mm-hmm. Um, Greg, do you have uh, a favorite one that you were part of? I I tried think I can't think of a favorite one off the top of my head that I, that would be my favorite that I was in. Um. Especially since I refuse to listen to the ones that where I can hear the sound of my own voice. Can't oh. stand it. <laughs> the feelings uh, mutual. Everybody, fe- everybody feels but the, that. Um, the uh, my favorite that aired though was the 
a symphony soundbite. Is that what it was called? Or uh, was it, it was, a, it was a video game soundbite symphony. Soundbite symphony. Yes. Uh, because even outside video games, I love music. I absolutely love music. Complete audio file. Got to have a nice thing. I have nice earphones, nice soundbar, stereo to listen to music. I, I just love it. And video game music is some of the best music that's ever been, really. And it's so key in setting the atmosphere of the game. It can make or break the game. And some of the songs you guys picked were ancient, but there was an art to perfecting these low bit MIDI songs. There, they, I mean, it, it, it was like, it's like sprite art with, with, with low pixels. It's like, it, it was such an art form to be skilled to make something out of that. So I, that was my favorite episode. Uh, that, that, yeah. That, and, and that was one that me and Mike were going back on who was going to talk about that one. And I mean, it's, it's definitely one of the best episodes we've ever done. Um, so, um, so for myself, um, I, I think the most fun or, or the, probably the one that I most enjoy doing uh, other than soundbite symphony, we've, we've tried that, um, the episode where I summarized in the whole hour and 20 minutes, the entire entirety of the MCU leading up to Endgame. There's been a couple times where I've gone to animate that episode because the audio, I mean, it's the summary's really good. Um, I, I, I actually went, went to try to animate it and I was like, nah, you know, it's going to take too much work. I actually thought about trying to talk Bella into doing it because She's a bit of an artist now. She's she's blowing up on the gram. She's got like she just posted something today, and it's got like ten thousand views, and I don't know how many. It she's she's doing good on there. <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, I really enjoyed that episode. The uh, so funny story. Um, you know, because that's what that that's what this episode's about. It's talking about funny stories and stuff. Um, so I, uh, I was at my in-laws for the weekend, um, before we were going to do that episode. And so I got out, um, my, my smartphone and just started typing on the notes and everything and just perfecting the entire script of, of, of the entire MCU and just like, okay, this happened and then this happened and then this happened and then this happened before that. And then that happened before that. And then this happened over here, and um, because, and I had started at their house, we you know just in you know a little bit of time, and then we went up to the Franklin Institute, and I was just in the back of the van for like four hours, just <laughs> typing away, making this making this friggin' thing, and uh, and I was really proud of it when I was done with it. Um, I really I really like doing that one. The thing about that episode is um, you didn't need us for it. Um, right. That, 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 that was literally a monologue. Yeah. No. And I had even said that in the middle of the episode. I was like, "Are you guys still there?" And and it was either you or Jason that said, "No, you're doing a great job. Just to, we're listening. Just keep going." A little behind the scenes on that, uh, J- Jason actually went on to do something else because <laughs> he was like, "Ah." I don't think I need to be here. I'm going to do dishes or something like that. And that's the last time that Jason's been on the podcast. <laughs> He's still doing dishes. That's right. He never, never quite finished those dishes. Mm. <laughs> Did I make you put pop through your nose, Luke? No, no, almost. almost. <laughs> and this isn't pop. I mean, I guess, I guess you could call that pop. It's seltzer. I drink, I drink seltzer during the podcast. All right, I had dinner during the podcast. That's okay. That's no. okay. Um, Central time, man. Central time. So my favorite episode, though, that we've produced in the entirety of the whole podcast. Here it comes. What is your problem? <laughs> <laughs> is the episode with Rudy Race. Um, 
it's the uh, he's a hero of mine um and i just i just messaged him on instagram one day just saying hey we're gonna do this podcast series on fallout 76 or tie it into that it's how to survive in post-apocalyptic appalachia and the first part of that episode or the first part of that series was with uh, my buddy Lance Murray, who has a farm, and he uh, did a whole episode on sustainable farming and how to do it. Um, I actually even employ some of those principles in my own garden, and I get some great results. I don't do the whole make the cover crop and then you know plant the legumes and everything like that, but I do keep my gov- my uh, garden covered all winter with the uh um the the landscaping fabric and then in the next uh, the the subsequent year i pull that up and i don't till um which is one of the things that he talked about in that episode um uh, but in the the second uh part of the episode or the the part two of that series was with uh, rudy race um and it was talking about um you know survival tactics on and he, he, it was so great because he tied in like how to survive in like a mountainous terrain and what things you would do differently, um, what what things you should prioritize, and it's just it was, it was a he was a fantastic guest. <laughs> he he was and uh, he's um the, he's the biggest celebrity we've ever had on the podcast. Um, we are. We, and I'm going to use this as a segue. We have another celebrity guest here coming up. Not the next episode, because that's the E3 episode that we're going to do, but the episode after. Um, I've talked about it a lot on uh, this podcast and on Bobby's Classic Cartridge Catalog. Um, uh, AM2R, or another Metroid 2 remake, which was developed by one developer uh one guy that was just trying to get his feet wet on on game making with uh game maker studio and uh um it's uh milton uh i can't pronounce his last name milton gas gas uh hold on hold on I'll, I'll, I'll look it up right now uh milton gosty Gos Gos g u a S T I Goosty Goosty. Yeah, that sounds better. Goosty. I hope Milton so. Goosty. <laughs> I hope I'm not wrong. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. He is going to be on the podcast um, here in uh, July. In July. So uh, very excited about that. Um, and uh, this was something that me and Alex were talking about, you know, who was the bigger celebrity guest in. Rudy Ray's was, you know, probably a bigger celebrity guest for public notoriety. However, Milton is a bigger guest for our recollection, you know, like, you know, in all of us in, in, in the geekdom. I mean, like he he is he took something absolutely from nothing and made something absolutely incredible. And uh, he's he's a he's a great developer, and uh, we're lucky to have him on the show. So that will be a really really good episode. Um, and, and you uh, know, I joke around, but uh, the Rudy Reyes episode was fantastic, and I, I think it showed a variety of of, of interests. Because that's also something that I, I think we all try to promote is that geekdom is a variety of things. And like survivalist stuff and outdoorsy stuff is absolutely something you can geek out about. So I thought that was fantastic to have um, to have that kind of a different thing on the show. Right, right. Yeah, that was a, Go ahead. That was a series that um, I remember. I was listening to the first. I was in on the first part of it about the gardening. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is fascinating. I mm-hmm. have absolutely nothing to contribute. <laughs> this is fascinating. <laughs> Same. You know, <laughs> well, I mean, both of you did like ask questions throughout that episode, and that's what I was really, 
I don't know. I got, I kind of feel uh, I I kind I kind of doubt my own my own ability sometimes to keep the conversation going. And sometimes I just need somebody to talk at, you know, like with the Avengers episode. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. We're actually going the uh, the me, Cassie and Bella are going through and rewatching all of uh the Avengers in chronological order and uh we're really enjoying it. But um so Sounds like a geek out. Yeah, yeah, it kind of is a geek out. Um uh, I was giving you a, a, a setup for a segue. Oh, oh you were. I mean, is it time for geek outs already? I mean no. I, nah. No, no, no. Okay, so we've talked about that. Hold on a second. Uh, what we were, what was the other things that we were gonna? Forgot his notes and everything. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, Luke's figuring things out. No, it's a shame he didn't keep a blooper reel. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of times that I, I feel like we should like start recording before we start recording, because a lot of our uh, a lot of our jokes come early. <laughs> yeah. <you know? laughs> That's true. I I have found them recording people like for interviews and stuff. They they say the most interesting things the second you stop the the mm -hmm. recording. So I, I got to the point where I pretend to stop and then they keep going and it'd be a much more rich conversation. Does that work? Yeah, it did. <laughs> well, Is that's that ethical? Good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it depends. Yeah. So, um, no, we talked about that. We've talked about that. Oh, Alex was talking about something that I, I actually did want to talk about. Um, which was, and you, and you touched on it, which was the different things that, you know, you can, you know, truthfully geek out about, and it's not necessarily about video games or movies or anything else. Like, for instance, um, Mike um, is actually, uh, um, uh, he, he's, he's got uh, quite a few books published now, um, and I, I like his books, but I'm not a big reader, um, so I don't, I don't, I, half the time I don't finish them. I mean, I, I read a lot of your books in, in college, um, and... The bad but, ones. Yeah. <laughs> I like them, um, but... Uh, the poorly written ones. Yeah, one of the things that I, I actually geeked out about was when Mike gave me news the other day, um... Because this is a medium that I much more enjoy rather than, you know, r the book, book writing, right? Physical book. Mike, you want to take it away? <laughs> um, so there will be a audiobook of In the Country Dark coming out probably in June. Um, it, I'm in the review stages of it right now, and uh, that's all going very well. Uh, so if everything holds, uh, I should be setting a release date in the next week. I'm, I'm, and go ahead. I am. Um, I am also not a reader of books. I, I've written more books in the last ten years <laughs> than I've read, front to back. Um, that's, no, I've listened to plenty. I just, I'm like Luke. I, I start a book, I never get it finished. Yeah. <clears throat> no matter how good it is, it seems. Audiobooks has been a good way for me to to get into like actual literature. Um, okay, like, you know, capital L literature or trashy fun. You know, there's a time and a place for both. And um, it's just there's a lot of things that I never got around to doing on it until I got it on audiobook. Um, yeah. I think the most recent audiobook, like a real book that I listened to, was The Three Musketeers. That, oh, how uh, that? It's fantastic. It's it's you know it's a classic for a reason. Um, it's fun. It's silly. And uh, yeah, Three Musketeers. I never saw the movies, but you know those aren't the same. Um, yeah, audiobooks. Big fan. 
uh, I can make a recommendation for an audio book that um, everybody has, you know, heard about, seen all of the media, but never read, probably. And um, uh, I suggest um, the complete works of Sherlock Holmes. Uh, hmm. That they're all real, just short stories, but they're all fantastic. Um, and it's really cool because um, I, I, when I was going through listening to it, I was like, man. This, uh, this, this really, that I can see where they took, took the, the, this element from this story and this element from this story and wove it together to make this episode of Sherlock from BBC with, uh, uh yeah, but B- Bendy Dick. Cumberbun. <laughs> ben, Bendy, Bendy Dick, Cum- Cumberbun. Bandersnatch. <laughs> Bandersnatch. <laughs> are, are, are we doing uh, book recommendations now? Because I can geek out about that too. Sure. So uh, the the I've I've had Audible now for maybe a year, kind of on and off, and uh, the the one that I've discovered, I, I, I've been mostly doing Pulitzers because uh, I figure I might as well start at the top, see what you know makes these books great. And the one I stumbled upon was uh, a Confederacy of Dunces. And uh, it, it's probably the most humorous of any Pulitzer winner because a lot of them are pretty dark. Um, but this one, this one's hilarious. Um, if you read the history behind it, it's it's kind of a tragic backstory of how it got published and uh, p- the pathways for it to be made into a movie. People have considered cursed because of this backstory. Mm. Um, but because I see you're curious now, so. So what happened was the author uh, wrote the story in the in, in the '60s and uh, had a publisher in mind, but uh, they kept wanting changes, and he eventually got frustrated, and and they c- kind of canceled the book deal. And so he kind of lost his mind after that, and uh, ended up killing himself. And so his and he was only like 30 at the time. His, his mom found the carbon copy of the manuscript under his bed while she's cleaning up, and started hounding uh, other authors about reading it to see if it was good and. Uh, finally, she found one and forced him to read it, and he was like, "Well, this is incredible." So they uh, it took another several years for for them to find a publisher. Then, um, but it was finally published in 1980, and then won the Pulitzer in 1981. Wow. So it's kind of a, a wild journey for that. That is an interesting story. Yeah, mm-hmm. but uh, they they've been trying to have it made. Like uh, Jim Belushi was was on board to do the movie originally, and then of course he died, and then uh, Chris Farley. And of course, you know what happened to him, and uh, uh, the other guy who I can't think of, John Candy. Wow. He, so, so that's why they they consider it to be a cursed movie, because uh, every time they try to get the meet, get it made, the the lead actor dies. <laughs> that's crazy. So, but gr- great book. Um, it's, it's probably my new favorite book, actually. <laughs> that's fantastic. So. Hold on. Random. Random. Yeah. Geek culture. In Well, while Luke gets his thing straightened West... out, I'll tell you, one of my favorite moments from uh, The Three Musketeers, it's just a short line, but, I, but I, I laughed out loud in the car listening to it, that they're in some kind of a battle or something, and they just kind of take a minute to muse, like, why are we fighting the Catholics anyway? And, and he says, well, um, they say the Psalms in uh, Latin, and we say the Psalms in French. Oh, yeah, yeah, that checks out. Yeah, kill them all. <laughs> you know? Uh, <laughs> and I had a laugh at that, you know? Nice. Social commentary. Yeah. yeah in yeah. the middle of a fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, I thought that this... Uh... <clears throat> episode was going to go a lot longer but uh we've really reached the end of uh the content that i had uh i had planned but mm-hmm. i mean that's that's fine yeah, it's, for the geek now, anyways. it's a look back on on the show and you know the thoughts as to um, what we've done right what we've done wrong what we've enjoyed the most um i will st- i will put a cap on this though um I was going to stop doing this several times. Um, and every single time I always, you know, go back and I'm like, oh, you know what? I'm going to do one more episode or two more episodes or we're going to do that one. 
and then we end up doing it and then I have fun and then I just and and that's uh, that's the thing that I I I kind of want to say is um you know we do this podcast not because we're trying to produce an episode or you know trying to be the next big thing or be influencers or whatever we do these podcasts cuz they're fun you know we're geeking out about stuff that we had fun with and truthfully i mean we're all we all live in in different parts of west virginia or country and <laughs> and <laughs> and i mean this is just a way for us to just you know for me to get together with my friends and talk about geek stuff and uh you know there's usually a topic and you know i know that several other people do enjoy listening to this um and uh they they use it as a touchstone sometimes to find new things new um things to geek out about new new nerd stuff to check out new books um oh just the other day uh um somebody was uh telling me that they uh gave uh brandon sanderson a try and uh from what uh, something i said and they're then now they are totally hooked on all of the Brandon Sanderson books. Um, and I just, I, I'm glad that something that I enjoy making a, a few others enjoy listening to. And, and, and that I'm, I'm, I'm glad for, I'm glad that this, uh, this podcast has become a, a good outlet for that. Um, especially to the effect of, um, well, Mike, you know, in our 20s, we got pretty ambitious and we didn't finish a lot of things. <laughs> but we did finish some things. We did finish some things. But the the stain on all of us, uh, on all of our hearts, is Fairmont University 3. Man, just, and, oh. and, that, and that was, I kept trying to think of something to, uh, to to make to create because I'm a I, I like to consider myself a creative person and I kept thinking of different projects to start and this was attainable this was this was and um what um one of the things that made it attainable was because we decided to start using Anchor Anchor <laughs> is a nexus of podcasting. <laughs> It makes it easy to publish on several different platforms. They can even connect you with advertisers. Click you know, the we're, link. We're not getting paid extra for that. You yeah, know. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> you know yeah. a lot more of that than I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but what was it that? What is it that you say in the commercial? Um. Oh, Luke told me to try this po- this anchor thing for podcasting, and I tried it, and I was like, "Wow!" And that's not even scripted. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, do you guys remember a favorite geek out that you had on the show? A, like a favorite geek out? Yeah, just a random thing that you brought in at the end. Or the beginning when we used to do them at the beginning. Yeah, we used to do them at the beginning. I like that we do them at the end now. Because mm. I think uh, I, I'll start with my favorite yeah, one maybe you get the was goal. whenever I talked about uh, number stations, the secret <laughs> spy broadcasts and everything. Because I was getting ready to go uh, oh. to to another friend's thing and talk, do the presentation on number stations, and it, it went over very well. It, it was it was unique. It was weird. It was spooky. Um, and I, I would give it a second recommendation if you ever just want to fall down a, a Google rabbit hole number stations, just, uh, shoot that at Google and listen to some spooky spy radio stuff. I mean, Very cool. if I were to, I mean, this is a recent one, um, is talking about the, uh, the, the, uh, retroid pocket. I, I oh, love, I love this. Again. I love this friggin' thing. It's so <laughs> great. 
It's your third time geeking out about it, I think. I think it's my fifth, actually. <laughs> uh, that, but mm. it, it's uh, geeking out about different things about it. Um, um, I think the first time I geeked out about it was talking about I ordered it and I'm waiting for it to arrive. <laughs> and then, yeah. then, and then it was, uh, th- then it was uh, um, the the actual device, and then. I was geeking out about AM2R on the device, and yeah, yeah, it's um, though I will say though that that um, that thing has uh, helped me play a lot of games that I may have missed or replay some games that um, I think are great that actually weren't um, that um, before I do them for uh, Bobby's Classic Cartridge Catalog. Um, kind of play them myself before I'm like, okay, this is the uh, this is what we should do. Um, so that that's definitely helped. But um, <clears throat> anyway, but enough about me. Um, Greg, do you got a geek out that um, was your favorite? I can't remember those. <laughs> I can't. That's okay. The thing about geek you know. outs is they're so fleeting. <laughs> they are. They are fleeting. <laughs> Uh, Mike, do you have one? I'm going to assume I did a Final Fantasy VII remake one at one point. Yeah, so you did. I'm just gonna, I'm going to assume I did and claim that's it, with no further memory other than that. Yeah. Do we have any geek outs today? I mean, it's going to be about uh, uh, Intergrade, uh, which comes out in like 12 days or something. Oh, don't um, remind me, man. I just but, uh, oh. that's why I'm trying to get the <laughs> fucking PlayStation um, Five, and I. Okay, I'll tell you one reason why I keep getting distracted during this episode. There is a Amazon restock right now, and the system's all busted. Yeah, I have but, had this yeah, thing in my 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 cart like I I conservatively ten times on different platforms. Okay, keep going, keep going, Mike. Did, did you just announce that live to all our listeners? Everybody, go to Amazon right now and outbid Luke on and and uh, PS Five. Hey, I think we're good because uh, right now, currently, we have one viewer. Oh wait, it's me. <laughs> hey. uh, I, I will continue my geek out if you if we're rolling into this segment. Go ahead. Um, my my geek out is actually just the uh, general amount of things being released or have been given release dates i was disappointed that horizon didn't have one this evening like that's the whole reason i watched their thing on state of play uh but they're like nope no release date yet um so i'm, I'm gonna assume christmas at this point mm-hmm. yeah but uh also uh you know speaking of modest mouse there's a new modest mouse album coming out in june as well i am and actually so, kind of excited about that yeah i'm jazzed about that uh I don't buy albums often anymore because I have Spotify membership, but uh, I did buy that one or pre-order that one, I guess. Uh, so you got that. And uh, I feel like there's another thing. But anyways, I, I think um, what what it is is uh, anticipation has returned where I think COVID had stripped, you know, the pandemic stripped a lot of that away. Um, so, so suddenly there's like things to be excited for coming down the pike. And uh, that's what I'm geeking out about. Okay. Greg, you got a geek out for tonight? I just started playing Biomutant. How and, is that? Well, a lot of people don't seem to like it. I've noticed. I'm not asking anybody else's opinion because they already know <laughs> all theirs and the reviews are mixed. But, um, What's yours? I really like it. I'm having a lot of fun. Um action rpg it mixes martial arts and melee weapons with guns especially pistols and magic so you can combine those two things you can you know three things rather you can focus on one more than the other um so i really enjoyed the combat i like the story but i can see where the story's not for everybody because all the characters speak in gibberish and everything's narrated which i don't know some people don't seem to like that but I, I'm I'm amused. It's like I think I, not only does it remind me of the Triune series uh, narration, I think it's actually the same narrator. Yeah, it um, sounds like Hollow Knight, which is fantastic. Well, yeah. Also, um, 
the game I just finished, um, Shadow of the Colossus. It was all... In fact, I typed it into Google. It was like the first result that came up. Why is my English narration not working? <laughs> <laughs> it's... I've, I've had a lot of fun. I already beat the first big boss. It looks really good, especially considering it's last gen. Um, so I'm having... And it has... Um, consequential decision making it reminds me of fable you can go dark light or try to go down the middle so um that's in both your actions and dialogue choices affect that which also affects your abilities and you can mutate yourself and your mutation affects your appearance it does affect your appearance yeah that's like cool. um yeah like your stats uh, your stats actually affect your appearance. So if you increase your strength, you will get bulkier. Yes. Like when you first make, there's a lot of customization when you make your character and you pick a race and you pick a class and then you can uh, fine tune your um, stats with like this wheel picker. It's kind of like a collar picker, but you're moving it around. And as you do, your character will sit there and change its appearance and as you play the game and do the same thing as you're leveling, you can you can affect the character's appearance. Hmm. That's pretty cool. It reminds me back to like Knights of the Old Republic, whenever, you know, you, you get light side or dark side, you know, more light side, your character takes a gallant pose, and as you get more dark side, they're all hunched over and menacing. You know? and, their, and their skin the gets all gray and cracked and everything. Yeah. Um, and the light and the dark actually are personified. They're the, actually, they're, they're the only two things that actually speak understandably besides the narrator. You actually have a little like white entity and a little black entity. <laughs> and like I, I didn't know what I was doing the other day, and I saw the black entity pop up over this, this box, and I'm like... Well, why are you here? And I went over there, and I had to reset because I was trying to go the light path. And when I went and clicked on him, he had me set all the, this entire tribe's food stock on fire. Mm. That's why he was there. He's like, here, come do this evil thing. So they they pop up, uh, and when you choose one over the other, uh, sometimes the one will go and knock the other one off the screen. <laughs> that's that's actually... Oh. I, I'm, I'll have to look it up. I, I'm... I, I was starting to uh, when I started first started looking at Biomutant. I was like, "Is this going to be the next ghost for me? Is this going to be the next ghost of Tsushima?" And I'm I'm not sure yet, but um, I'm I'm going to wait a little bit longer. Um, maybe wait for them to put out some patches and stuff. Now, Greg, are you? Uh, you have a PlayStation Five, so you can tell me yes. this. Is it not? Is it? not putting it out in 4k i'm playing it on xbox series x because it looks better on it okay so <laughs> it does run okay on a playstation 5 but the optimization is working better on the xbox at the moment that could be changed in one patch yeah so um, maybe and a lot and some of the complaints people have with it could be changed in in a patch. Yeah, so, I mean, one of the things that I've heard was that um, the combat uh, can feel a little clunky sometimes. I can see where people could feel that way. I actually think, after I got the hang of it, I thought it was actually smooth. I hated it at first, but once I got the ha hang of it, I actually ended up loving um, combat, especially since... Um, Sometimes you go into like matrix mode and you slow down. Like you can jump out of the way and shoot your guns and it'll slow down like the matrix. Or Max but, Payne. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I hated combat at first, but after I um, got the hang of it, I liked it better. I think it also could be people are picking the wrong play style because I had to make three characters before I, I made one that I liked. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Alex, you got a geek out for us tonight? Uh, yeah. Um, the Pittsburgh Penguins, who were just recently eliminated from the playoffs. Yeah, so, I uh, saw that. Uh, are the Bruins go, out yet? Go, I don't. Go, go Caps. Are the, are the Bruins <laughs> out yet? I don't think that they're out yet. I don't yet, think so. Don't... No, that's not really my geek out. Um, uh, I've recently got back into the game Stellaris 
which is a rabbit hole that I fall down once in a while, and it, it completely consumes my life. Yeah, uh, whatever I'm playing it. Um, I think that's a game requirement. Like there's <sighs> like there's yeah. CD-ROM drive, hundred gigs, complete and total concentration, and let everything be damned. So yeah, uh, Stellaris is a, a a 4x strategy game in space. You conquer, explore, and uh, defeat the other empires in space, and you get to make your own race of people. And there's a variety of different things they can be. From you know, like the peacekeepers, you can be the Federation, or you can be the devouring horde that just eats everybody. You know, you can be the peacemakers or the empire dominators or whatever, whatever you want to be. And, um, and it takes a very long time to play and it's, it's fantastic. So still are, and they, they, they've added new content. I, the, the race that I'm playing now is the necrophage, which is like they're, uh, they're a virus that turns you into them. So you like you go to a planet, you infect them with the necrophage, and then they'll be your people uh, after so many after so many years, and uh, you know, horrifying. But 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 a fantastic time sink. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I, I think I played. I, th- I don't think I own it. I think I played the demo. It, um, yeah, I, I I thought about getting it, but it did look like it was going to suck my entire life if I did. Oh, it does. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's a fantastic like two weeks to month before you decide. I haven't taken a shower in four days. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sometimes I like to imagine kind of backstories to my civilizations because it doesn't have anything and there there's no story or anything. But like you know there was one civilization that was like uh, a theocratic evangelists that they're like going out to uh you know m- convert everybody to their faith and they were bird people and uh and, and and i imagined in my head that like they're going out there to make everybody believe that the bird is the word everybody <laughs> will know that the bird is the word <laughs> that, do you, or else the bird do you play on a console or pc pc that's, I can't imagine playing a game like yeah, that on console. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I I couldn't imagine. That's that well. That that's what I was wondering because some people play these games on console, and because and I've never really. Uh, I didn't know if it was any good on console because it didn't look like the type of game I would play on console. One of the only yeah. f- good strategy games on console is XCOM, the new XCOM. Um, yeah. I can see that. Um, okay, so my geek out. Um, so um, been, been playing a lot of games right uh, right now. I just finished Shadow Colossus. That was that was that was a lot of fun. Uh, really enjoyed that. But the one that I'm playing right now is my actual geek out. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but I mean, they pretty much spell it however they want. Vampire or vampire with a Y. The game is pretty cool. <laughs> um, so uh, you're basically like the world of the most world-renowned like blood transfusionist <laughs> that goes to the front lines to help with the medical need in World War One, and then he is turned into a vampire, <clears throat> and um. So you um, encounter this doctor that uh, he owns. A, he's a administrator of a hospital, and he's rather intrigued with your, you know, uh, your demeanor. That you 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 see this as an affliction, and uh, he's familiar with your pr- prior vampire work. And uh, he's like, I believe that we can do something here. So you become a actual resident doctor at at this hospital and you're a vampire and you're, you're interacting with people and um one of the cool uh, most interesting things about it is so you can grind out your experience points through combat that's fine in each each character each 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 guy is like maybe 
10, 20, 30 XP. But if you, it, and you can, you can uh, suck their blood in the middle of combat to get a, a quick blood magic boost, you know, so then you could do different blood magic moves, like, you know, you know, leap towards them and then like, slash him across the face or you know regenerate your health or or whatever um but uh um if you actually want to level up your character you don't want to you you don't want to just grind out your your character you 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 want to get to know the citizens and get to find out who the assholes are so then you can kill them and have no remorse. Or you can go and just like kill everybody and get a, you know, become the vampire god, you know, of London. Uh, it takes place in London, um, though not as intricate of London as uh, Watch Dogs is. Um, but uh, yeah, va vampire. Um, the, the thing that's interesting about the game, though, is that it's um, not. It's like a, a cross between dialogue and combat, and um, sometimes it's sometimes it's it's switch between the two. It is like I I I didn't know I was supposed to be doing combat right now, or or, or whatever, or or this is a whole big long dialogue sequence, and and the story is really really good. <clears throat> and when I was talking uh, with uh, somebody today, it made me realize what game this actually is like. It's like Mass Effect, where um, you, you've got you've got some pretty good combat, because um, some people have said that this is a Souls-like game. It is not at all by any means. Um, yeah, it's it's the the combat can be a little bit difficult, but it's it's a it's a standard adventure style you know combat system, but the the thing that makes it like Mass Effect is the the morality system and the very intricate, very well scripted story. Um, so it's just you know Mass Effect in London and you're a vampire. So to make that mental leap. <laughs> All right. So yeah. There's something that just really cracks me up that the, a, a blood transfusionist becomes a vampire like well what's your what's your specialty doctor blood transfusion <laughs> blah, 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 blah. <laughs> no um apparently there's something there there's a reason why you were turned i don't i haven't gotten that far into the story but it seems to be that you were chosen because of that yeah so it was logical yeah <clears throat> um oh in the spanish flu oh that that's another thing mm. the spanish flu is, is is running rampant in in london during this time so some of the references to the current <laughs> pandemic it, it it's rather interesting right <laughs> coming off of covid you know and playing this game it's like ooh man all right <laughs> What what put your I... mask on, you stupid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for uh, redneck to be standing outside of uh, of uh, um, London Walmart, going, "Don't tread on me." <laughs> That's not mine. Keeping back six feet <laughs> or six. Uh, damn it, metric system. Um, I don't um, know what four point five meters. Four point five, five meters from me. <laughs> But Actually, this is I old don't... Tommy London, so it would be like some kind of ridiculous. Hopog. Yeah. I think, they, I think at that point they were still using feet, weren't they? Yeah. Something think, ridiculous. Because that's where we got it from. Mm hmm. I think. Yeah, I th yes. Yes, yes, Luke. <laughs> yes. Okay. <clears throat> I'm not I'm a historian, and neither are you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, you guys Eddie, are really cutting into my Stellaris time. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> I got some vampire to play. I'm just going to sit around and wait a couple more days. Why are you waiting a couple more days? You've Before got a PlayStation integrated. 5. You've got lots of games to play. No, I, I, I'm waiting for Integrate, and uh, Horizon doesn't have a release date yet. 
<laughs> There's only two reasons I got the thing. He he doesn't have that much to play. Most of the PlayStation Five games that are out are overrated. Oh, do you not have? I, I, have you not played Ghost of Tsushima? No, no that you can play. Play that. For yourself. Play that. It's, it's sixty frames on PS Five. Yeah. It's. Uh, oh. so I, I, I do, that. I do plan to get it. Um, I I came very close to getting Returnal just as a, something to fill time, but I. I read the synopsis, or uh, yeah, I read the Wikipedia synopsis instead. I was like, "Oh, that's interesting. It's like a Doctor Who episode." And then I was good. <laughs> right? I saw that episode of Doctor Who. It was, it was exactly. It was, it was good. You know. <laughs> the angels were weeping at the end. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get Ghost Man. It's it's everything. Oh man, yeah. it is. <laughs> I, I I do plan to. It's like Death Stranding. I'm waiting for it to go on sale. So so Luke, I mean, I've gotten more than Luke's recommendation this time, so I know it's got to be good. That's, I, no, I, no, I haven't beat it though. He's correct to think that. Here's I haven't beat Here's the thing. I take it. my time. I take my time with it though. I I walk okay. I walk around and wonder. And here's the thing. Photo mode, Mike. If I had known you hadn't of you know hadn't hadn't bought it yet i would have let you borrow borrow my copy because i have the physical and you have the disc edition huh damn it and i do i I tell people i I don't because i want i want to be the kind of person who lives without physical media um but but you already know yeah and all of our one listener yeah well i mean we have more listeners you know when i actually publish this that's true yeah, it's just nobody seems to watch the live, and the only, uh, pretty much the only reason why I'm actually putting this up on Twitter, uh, or up on Twitch, is because it makes it easier for me to publish to YouTube from it, and then it, it's actually easier to publish to YouTube from Twitch than it is to use YouTube Live and then put it on YouTube. How much sense does that make? I believe it. Yeah, yeah that sense. promotes Twitch. You know, it's whatever. Uh, it's fine. It's fine. So, okay. Well, I think I'm going to wrap up this episode. Uh, thank you for listening to RGC WV Random Geek Culture in West Virginia. I have been your host, Luke Hersey. Tonight, t- tonight was Mike Mallow. Hi. And Alex. And Greg. Bye. And if you've liked this, um, probably not on Twitch, but if you've liked this on YouTube, or you've uh, then then like and subscribe and do all the good things. If you haven't liked it, you can dislike it. You know the algorithm likes interaction, so go ahead and hit that dislike button. That's fine to me too. Go ahead and leave some bad comments. That that works fine. I can just mute you. Um, and uh, talking about us is the important thing. Yeah, you're talking about us. That's interaction. So it's no skin off my back. Um, and uh, uh, if you're listening to the audio version of this, thank you for being a devoted uh, listener on Anchor or Sketcher or Bitwave or the uh, what, what are the Slacker and all those other ones. Um, you, so you made some of those up. I don't think so. I think. Okay. I think think some of those are an actual thing. I know I probably made up one or two. Uh, they sounded right at the time. Um, and uh, if you liked this, um, you can send me a uh, email. Um, all the links are in all the places. Um, or you can also send me a voicemail to 304-566-9777. Welcome to the end. Welcome to the end.